Okay, so this is a very special phone. Let's see if you can guess it. It has a curved OLED panel. Nope, not Moto. Snapdragon 7 Gen 3 processor, a nice camera setup and comes with a charger in the box. Now, I'm not sure if you're able to guess it, but it's pretty sure that I'm not talking about Samsung, Motorola or even nothing. So, which phone is it? Okay, so let me give you one last hint and that will probably do the trick. This phone is from a very special company. The one that launched the first ever Android phone back in 2008. Yes, you guessed it. This phone is from HTC, a company that launched some really good smartphones back in the day but kind of lost its way in the last few years and now they are back with this phone. So when I came to know about this phone, I got super excited because HTC is very close to my heart. In fact, my first ever smartphone was HTC One M8. It was one hell of a phone and I'm sure a lot of you can relate to it. At the time I got this device, HTC was among the top three smartphone makers in the world. But over the last few years, they couldn't keep up with the massive competition from Chinese brands and faded away. But this phone that they launched exclusively in Taiwan gives a teeny tiny hope that HTC is not done yet and a big comeback is about to happen. Let's get to it now. So this is the HTC U24 Pro that launched exclusively in Taiwan but we got it for you guys after putting a lot of effort. I'd really appreciate if you can like this video so that it reaches more people. Okay so this is how the phone looks in all its glory. It's a pretty standard design with plastic back, metal frame and a curved OLED screen but there are some interesting things as well. First of all, it comes with a headphone jack which is quite rare but that's not all. It even has this notification LED which is quite nostalgic. It was the thing back in the day. Apart from that, there's hybrid SIM slot on the bottom, power and volume buttons on the right and a Type-C port at the bottom. This phone is also IP67 rated so you can give it to Kopi Bahu. And if I talk about the display, it's a 6.8 inch Full HD 120Hz curved AMOLED panel and it gets plenty bright be it indoors or outdoors. HTC hasn't specified the peak brightness numbers but in our testing, it reached 1200 nits which is decent. The screen is also Gorilla Glass protected but again, HTC hasn't specified if it is Gorilla Glass 5 or Victus but it's okay I guess since HTC is out of practice. Other than that, the in-display fingerprint scanner works well and there's even a proper AOD here which is always welcome. The movie watching experience on this phone is also quite good, there's HDR support on YouTube and Prime and the dual stereo speakers also play along quite well. They sound pretty loud and crisp. So when it comes to the design and build, HTC hasn't really tried to do anything different here. It's basically a run-of-the-mill formula with HTC logo engraved on the back. I mean, I really want HTC to step up their design game because that's exactly what differentiated them 12 years ago. So if they're actually looking to make a comeback in 2024, I think they should put more work on their design. But let's talk about the rest of the phone now. The HTC U24 Pro is powered by Snapdragon 7 Gen 3 with 12 GB of LPDDR5 RAM and 256 GB of UFS 3.0. One storage. Benchmark scores are decent be it N22 or Geekbench and it can also handle some casual gaming but it's not a performance centric phone. In day to day usage though, the phone feels quite snappy and the RAM management is also pretty good. The software experience is also pretty sorted as the phone runs on stock Android 14 with only a few HTC apps. And yeah, there's no information on the update schedule which I think should have been communicated by the brand but it is what it is. Now the performance and software on this phone is pretty standard but the cameras are surprisingly good. The camera camera setup on this phone is also impressive with a 50 megapixel selfie camera, a 50 megapixel main rear sensor with OIS, a 50 megapixel telephoto lens with 2x optical zoom and an 8 megapixel ultra wide camera. Even the camera app has some AI features and the one that I found to be the most useful is the picture perfect mode that works just like Google's best take and the results are actually quite good. And once I started taking photos with this phone, I just couldn't stop because the photos came out really well be it the daytime or the night time. The details were on point for most photos but the colors were slightly boosted. The selfies also came out pretty sharp with good details when purification toggle was turned to zero. Even the output from the telephoto lens was quite good but there were some focusing issues on it which I think could be a bug. And lastly, the ultra wide camera maintains the color from the main camera but couldn't capture as much details. In terms of videos, there's 4K30 on the rear camera but the videos aren't that stable because OIS doesn't kick in. You can also record 4K30 from the front camera and the output does look good. Overall, in terms of cameras, HTC has done some really good work but it's still far from the competition. And if I talk about the battery, the phone comes with a decently sized 4600mAh battery with 60W wire charging support and 15W wireless charging support. The battery life is also pretty good as I got around 6 hours of SOT with medium usage. And if you're wondering if the packaging is environment friendly, well, it's not because you do get a charger in the box. And I'm sorry about it. <laughs>
Lastly, in terms of connectivity, there's Wi-Fi 6C, Bluetooth 5.3, 12 5G bands, NFC and also a fast Type-C port. I used it with both Airtel and GeoSIMs and it worked well in India. Coming to the pricing now, this phone launched in Taiwan at 560 euros which roughly translates to 50,000 Indian rupees. Now at that pricing, this phone does not really make sense. So why did I say that this phone deserves to launch in India? Well, I said this because Indian smartphone market deserves a brand like HTC, a brand that started it all, a brand that revolutionized smartphone designs and can probably do it again. A brand that might not be relevant in market share pie charts, but it's still relevant for a lot of us. And finally, a brand that we are all rooting for. And it's not just HTC, HMD is also making a comeback in India and even Acer is bringing back their smartphone division. It'll be great to see veterans making a comeback, isn't it? By the way, which smartphone brand you want to see make a comeback? Tell us in comments.